All right, what's the first one? Y squared plus X squared equals Z squared. Can the X and Y change places? Should they technically change places? I did say A squared, B squared, C squared. So the Pythagorean theorem is in alphabetical order, yes? So if I wanted to be a real dink, is that okay? Is it? You'll notice up here that A is always the shorter side. So am I allowed to be a real dink here? Yes. Would I? No. What's this one? He waited patiently. Thank you, Michael. What about this one? What's this guy? 28. 140. No, it's 20. Because that's 144 plus 256, which equals 400, which I square root. What's this guy? Pardon me? 34. Because that's 900 plus 256, which is... 1,156, which square roots to 34, according to Sade. I didn't get out my calculator. I believe her. Yeah. And number 11? Well, with rounding, it's 8.7, but it's like 8.66. 8.7. Six, because I said right in the instructions to round to the nearest tenth. It's a double lesson in making sure everybody can both read a math question and B knows what the nearest tenth is. Is everybody good on that page? Lovely. Now turn the page over and there's one, two, three, four more highlighted questions. You'll notice that one of them doesn't even give you a triangle. Oh! You have to draw one or visualize it in your head. You all know what a ladder leaning against a wall looks like, though. Shouldn't be that difficult. If you need a visual aid, there. Sure. Put everything to one decimal. I don't care. So we're doing one B five and which other? I'll shrink it down so you can see it all. How's that sound? One, four, A and B and five. Yo, does he? 
Why are you being Max's lawyer? Max talks all class without paying any attention to math. Why can he not talk to me now? I know, I'm doing this on purpose, Mason, because he can hear me. Long, why do you have two? Is one of those mine? I, I don't know. Just it is. That's the only calculator I have. I guess you should have gotten yourself one on the weekend that you know how to work, like I told you to all last week. But I'll give you a hint. The square root and the squared button are on the top left above seven. That should be helpful to you here. The X squared button will square things. The second and then the square root button will square root things. All right, number one should look like this. 12, three, which means this is 12 squared minus three squared to get this, which I'm gonna call W squared because it's the wall. 144 minus nine is 135, square root of 135 is 11.6. Why am I doing this to you now? Because for the entirety of this next unit, you need to be able to draw a triangle and know what's what. That's why I gave you the visual aid. 4A, 6, 8. Automatically, you know that's 10. If you don't, you do the math. 36 plus 64 is 100, square root is 10. Now you have 10 and 12 to find x. That's 10 squared plus 12 squared, which equals 244. And then you square root that, which will be somewhere around 15 and a half. 15.6. 15 15 Look at that, almost exactly right. You're doing good. You're not using a calculator at all. This one. Hmm, trouble. I need x, so I need that side. Where do I get that side from? Over here. That is 14 squared minus 10 squared, which is 196 minus 100, which is 96. The square root of 96, but you don't need the square root of 96. You're going to use 96. 96 minus 6 squared, which is 36, equals 60. That's what I need to take the square root of which will be around 7.8. Is it? 7.7. 7.7, well. okay. Again, I'm not using a calculator. Yeah, and you said around, so you're still correct. Mm -hmm. And finally, number five. You shouldn't have even needed your calculator. Why? Because it's the same as three, four, and five. Because it's the same as three, four, five, except it's 10 times bigger, so it's Fitty. Any questions about our good friend Pythagoras? If he invites you over for Suvlaki, you should go. Anyone? What's Pythagoras, he's Greek. Suvlaki, Greek dish. Meat know. on a stick. I didn't know what Suvlaki was, but now that I do, I do get the joke. Here. Okay, and yet you're still not laughing. No. That's hurtful. I like Archimedes better than Pythagoras. Okay, Eureka, you should be laughing. Archimedes and Pythagoras go out for dinner. That sounds like a beginning of a joke. I should work out one for that. All right, that is it for Pythagoras. You need to be friends with Pythagoras. Is everybody friends with Pythagoras? All right. If you need to be more friendly with Pythagoras, there's 15 extra questions there. 
Feel free to do them and submit them to me and I'll tell you if they're right or not. Turn the page over and you have to make a small change because I put the dot in the wrong place. Everybody look on your page in front of you. There is a little dot right below the letter C. It should not be below it. It should be right beside it. Everybody make that dot, please. This dot that my red circle is on is wrong. So I'm going to erase it. You cannot do that. So that's why I'm telling you to put the dot right beside the letter C, not slightly below the letter C. To the left of it, just like I have done. That black dot right there, to the left of the letter C, you should have. Right now, your dot is slightly down below the letter C. It needs to be right beside it. That's all I am telling you. Now, please follow along. You're not going to get a ruler because I gave you a graph so you can count. Okay? Connect A to F. Yeah? Yeah. Connect B to F. Yeah. What have you just made? A right angle. You haven't made a triangle yet, have you? We've just made a right angle. Everybody good? All right. Now, we're going to use red. We're going to connect A and B. Everybody cool? All right. How far is it from A to F? Four. Nice. How far is it from F to B? Three. Three. Nice. How long is A to B? Automatically. Five. Five. Everybody cool? E. If I got out a ruler and measured these, I would find that this would be the case. Is everybody good? Yeah? Okay. Now, you know that triangles work together from this talk from earlier, yes? I understand that, but you're aware that triangles work together. As long as they share all three angles, then we can do this thing with the fractions. Everybody's cool with that, yes? You may not be aware of how it works, but you're all cool with this. This is what we figured out Friday in our notes right here when we compared the lengths of the sides. Everybody's good, right? Okay. The key to this lesson, indeed the key to all of trigonometry, is understanding that relationship. All right? So the fractions which make ratios, because a ratio is just a fraction, all work together. Is everybody cool? Okay. Now notice, this first ratio is written in the way that ratios were written for you in grade three when your teacher first started teaching you about ratios. Right? I guarantee that your teacher had a textbook with some pictures of apples, some pictures of oranges, and said, how many apples are in this circle? And you said, five, Mrs. Bad Crumble. And then she said, how many oranges are in this other circle? And you said, seven, Mrs. Bad Crumble. And then she said, compare the apples to the oranges. And you said, there's five apples and seven oranges. And then she wrote five dot dot seven and started talking about ratios, right? Okay. Do that here. What is the ratio of BF to AF? How long is BF? You just wrote it. Three. Three, two, four. Agreed? How else can we write that ratio? There are two other ways that we can write that. Who can give me one of them? Three over four. A fraction is just a ratio. Why? Three-fourths. Three out of four. 
in a whole pie, there's four pieces. You have three of them, three to four. Everybody with me? So I can also write this as three over four. How else can I write it? The way that you all want to write it because you're scared of fractions. Decimals. Decimals. And what is this as a decimal? 0.75. Is everybody cool with those three methods of writing ratio? Now, I need you to understand something. They are all the same thing. Every decimal is a fraction, almost. Every fraction is a ratio. Is everybody cool? So if you ever see a decimal that stops like 0.75, you know that that is a ratio. And it is the answer to this division. Is everybody good with that? All right. So now I need to go, I'm going to connect with a green line this time. I'm going to continue on. F to G, and I'm going to go G up to C. Everybody cool? Now, how long is A all the way to G? 12. Excellent. So I'm going to do this thing where I, with green, I go all the way out because we're going to be working with the whole number. That's 12. Everyone good? Okay. And how long is C to G? Nine. Nine, because we moved the dot. Everybody cool? Now, I want the ratio of CG to AG. How far is CG? Nine. Nine. Nine to how far is AG? Twelve. What are the th two other ways I can write that ratio? 9 over 12, which is? 0. 0.75. 0. 0.75. Oh, 9 over 12, you'd simplify it. We would simplify it to 3 quarters, yes. And it equals 0. 0.75. Is everybody cool? Everyone's good? You don't simplify ratios, right? Yeah, you do. You're supposed to. With the ones with the dots? Yes. Okay. Is everybody cool with what we've done here? Now, notice I didn't ask about the hypotenuse here, right? I just wanted to remind you about 3, 4, 5. We're not worried about the hypotenuse yet. Now, you guys are smart kids. Going to go all the way out to H now. How far is that? Count it up. Twenty, right? Now go up to D. How far is that? Fifteen. Do the ratio. What's D H? Fifteen. What's AH, 20. How else can I write that ratio? 15 over 20, which is 15 to 20, which is 15 over 20, which is 3 over 4, which is 0.75. Is everybody with me? Is there? You don't have to know where we're going with this yet. You just have to understand that Three quarters, nine twelfths, fifteen twentieths are all the same thing. Do you get that? Is, is, is this the same concept as that whole if you take a side from one triangle and divide it by the other? Yes, it all comes back to that type of stuff. Is everybody cool with what we've done? We haven't done any math. We've just shown you something, yes? Everybody is good? Okay. Now... Knowing what you know now. All right, everybody cool? 
what would happen if I went out this way, 24? How far up would I have to go? That's the question. Look at what we've done. Look at where the numbers live and tell me if I went, and I'm going to write this over here, if I went A to I and I up to E, and A to I was 24, what would I to E have to be? Look at what we've done. I've already told you. You can see they're all related. I'm going along here at 24. So how far up would I have to go? 21. So you're, you would make the ratio 21 because you can see quite plainly that the vertical number is in the numerator position. So you say it would be 21 over 24. That would mean that 21 divided by 24 would have to equal what? 0.75, does it? No, so it can't be 21. But I like that you recognize it had to be the smaller number at least. Couldn't be bigger than 24. Guess again, what? 20 over, but I told you I went out 24. Yeah, I told you A to I is 24. So it can't be 25. Okay, everybody, please look. What do you notice about the two numbers in each case? It is 18, thank you. It is always a plus four. No. Notice where they are placed in the ratio. The vertical number is where? The beginning. Well, the first one. Yeah. The first number or the numerator? The second, the horizontal number is what? The second number of the denominator. Over here, I gave you A to I, which had to make it the denominator. I needed the vertical number. That's the unknown. But I knew it had to equal 0.75. So all you had to do was figure this out. Yes. Yes. Is everybody cool? What's wrong, Evan? Because I, I don't know how to help. You understand that this value is 9. Do you understand that this value is 12? Do you understand that when I divide them, I got 0.75? Do you understand that when I did it with 3 and 4, I got 0.75? Do you understand that when I did it with 15 and 20, I got 0.75? So do you understand that if I go out 24, I must have to go up 18 to keep that same 0 0.75? Yeah. Okay then. So don't shake your head that you don't get it. You get it. Now, what do you notice about the red, green, and black shapes? If the black line and the green line carried all the way down, what do you have? What shape is right here? Triangle, right? That triangle has, has that green angle, yes? Everyone agree? And it's got a 90 degree angle, yes? If that angle and 90, if you know them, you know the third one, don't you? Because triangles always add up to 180, but we'll come back to that later. In the green triangle, does it have that same angle? Is that green corner also in the bigger green triangle? Yes. Yes. 
Does the bigger green triangle have a 90? If that and that are the same, then what do you know about the blue angle and the blue angle? They're the same as well. So the red triangle, the green triangle have all the same angles, don't they? Which means they're all similar, yes? Which means those fraction things that we reminded you about earlier all work, yes? Now, in the black triangle, does it have this green angle still? Yes. Yes. Does it have a right angle still? Yes. So what does that tell us about this angle? It's the same as all of these. What if I drew this bottom line all the way over to Roberto? Could you then use your knowledge to tell me how far we'd have to draw the line from Roberto back that way in the room? Do we know? We don't know the number, but do we know how to do it? If I go all the way over to Roberto, is that the denominator or the numerator of the fraction I'm going to make? Is it the horizontal or is it the vertical number? Which one's Roberto? Roberto, right over there by the pencil sharpener. Right over there by the pencil sharpener. So I would have the distance to Roberto. What would it have to equal? 0.75. And we would figure out how far we'd have to draw from Roberto. Is everybody cool? What allows us to do that? The fact that this angle is shared by all of those triangles. Because all of those triangles share the relationship that we discussed on Friday. Is everybody okay with this? You don't have to know how to do it yet because I haven't actually told you anything about what you're doing with this knowledge. All I am telling you is that if I make a bigger triangle, this rule will still stick. Everybody get it? Now, what if I changed it, and I'm going to erase all this. Don't write down what I'm about to do. Just watch. What if I changed it to this? Q. Would this and this are they in the same positions that they were before? Do I still have a straight vertical line and a straight horizontal line? Yes. yes. So I could still take this value, right? Which would be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. 12. And I could do 4 over 12, couldn't I? That doesn't give me 3 quarters, does it? That gives me 0. 0.3333. So it's third. Right? Everybody with me? What else changed? The angle. The angle that I originally started with changed. Now, if I continue this red triangle this way, what am I going to know about... I don't want Microsoft Word. What am I going to know... Since I know this is one third, what am I going to know about this distance? Which you can see I purposefully went to the middle here. So do you know how long this is? Can anybody tell me exactly how long that is? Exactly. No, because I went to the middle of the dot, right? So we're going to call that X. And can anybody tell me exactly how long I went up here? You can't tell me exactly, can you? So we're going to call that y. But what do we know about y divided by x? If this one is 0.33, what is this one? 0.33. Does everybody get it? The angles 
determine how far up and down we go, which determines our decimal value. Is everybody cool? So that's the general statement. Now think about what we know. The decimal value, value, that's two L's in value, you idiot. The decimal value is the same regardless of side length. As long as what? What had to stay the same in every triangle we did to get 0.75? What was the part of it that didn't change? What's the only thing that didn't change? No, the legs changed. It went from 4 to 9 to 12. The hypotenuse went from 5 to blah to blah. What's the only part of the triangle that didn't change? This angle. Now, how does this help us? Same way I was talking about on Friday. This is why you can build a building with a model. This is why we know how far away a star is from us. This is how, you know, you see those people out on the street looking through a telescope at another guy down the street and they're all wearing the orange vests. You see those people out on the street ever? They're doing grade 10 math and they're being paid a very handsome salary to do so. Those surveyors are just doing this. But they get a laser beam. This ratio is called the tangent ratio. It is shortened to the word tan. All of you on your calculator should see a button that says tan. We are going to be using that now. It holds true for all right angle triangles. I have a tan dash one. You have tan. It's on the button. The tan dash one is written above the button. All right. And it is this ratio. Everybody draw. Everybody draw a triangle like we just drew. Put a little X down in that angle. Now, how does it work? It's this value, the vertical value, divided by the horizontal value, right? Everybody agree? We just did it seven times. Everyone agrees, right? But there's a problem with that. Because what if I turn the triangle that way? It's still a right angle, and it would still be this side over this side, wouldn't it? But now it's not vertical and horizontal, is it? So we need to come up with a better name for it. Because we can't say it's the uppy-downy one divided by the sidey-sidey one, can we? Shorter one can't do that because what if I drew it this way? So we need to come up with a better name for what the sides are. So I can't call this vertical. What? But what if I drew it differently? One on the right. What if I rotated it? It's still the worth as long as you use the same sign. You have to use the same side. All right. I, I agree. So now I'm going to change the colors. Red and blue. Yes. Do we have a word that we have learned in trigonometry to describe something that is across the triangle? Opposite. 
Do we have a word that we have learned in this unit to describe something that is beside you? No. Remember that when the four of you ask me how to do some of this, I'm not going to be helping you. Just making sure. Okay. What do we call the number that is beside the angle that we are working with? Does anyone remember? Nope. Say it louder. Adjacent. So now do those labels work no matter how I turn the triangle? If I turn this triangle completely upside down and this is the angle I'm working with, can I find the sides I need? Opposite is still over there. Adjacent is still right there. Is everybody good? So the tangent ratio, tan equals the opposite value divided by the adjacent value, which will then give me a decimal. Please notice that size doesn't matter. The decimal was always 0.75. So tan is not a measurement. Does everybody understand me? We can use tan to find measurements like we just did over here when we used our knowledge when this A to I was 24 and we used the tan knowledge to tell us that it was 18. Everybody good? All right, now comes the most frustrating part of being a trigonometry teacher. Every single one of you get your calculators out. If you have your phone, get your phone. Every single one of you look on your calculator screen and see if you see a letter D or DEG. One of those two. Everyone who sees that on their screen right now gets to relax for a minute. Is there anybody in the room that does not see D or DEG on their calculator? I'll deal with phones in a minute. No, 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 no. On the screen, not on the buttons. Look on your calculator screen. D or DEG. Do not look at the buttons. Everybody sees it? You won't. Anybody who has one of the very fancy schmancy calculators, hold it up, Max. Like Max's, will not see this. That's why I'm dealing with just regular calculators first. Everybody sees D or DEG. Nobody sees R or RAD and nobody sees G or grad? Nobody sees those? But you have DEG showing on your screen right now. That's what I'm asking you, Michael. Look at your, the gray part of your calculator and see if one of those is on it right now. Excellent, stop. Suk me. D or DEG. I'm trying to be as clear as possible without getting frustrated. All right. Now, if you have a phone, an iPhone, you will notice there's a button that says radian or degree. Push it until it says degree, I think. I don't really remember. Max, you should be okay. Wong, you should be okay. Those calculators are automatically in the right mode unless somebody else has changed it. Now we're going to find out if someone has changed it. Everybody on your calculator right now, push the button. Make sure your calculator says zero. Push the button that says TAN. 
If your calculator writes that word on the screen, please put your hand up. All of you have what I call a forward calculator, which means all you have to do is push tan and then the number. And then you might have to push equals. Everybody do that. And your calculator should say, if you are in the right mode, sorry, I pushed 65, 0.700, and then a bunch more decimals. Everybody who had their hand up, does your calculator show you that? Excellent. If your calculator doesn't show you that, that means you were not in D or DEG mode. If your calculator does not write the word tan, then you have what I call a backwards calculator. And you are smart enough to know that if forward you go tan 35, what do you do if it's backwards? 35 tan and then your calculator will show point 700 <coughs> everybody make sure you can make your calculator show point 700 for tan 35 try it both ways then i will help whoever can't yes that means you're not in d or deg mode which I only said 17 times, to be fair. Is everybody good? Yes. Great. Now do that twice more to make sure. Who would like to offer me the value for B? Tan of 15. Point two six seven. Awesome. Tan of 45. One. Just, it doesn't matter, Michael. Trust me. Just let's get the calculators working. Because you cannot do trig without it. That is one. Is everybody cool? All right. Now, what this means is this. For A, which I started in blue, if this is the angle I care about, this is opposite, this is adjacent, when I do that division, I'm going to get 700. Everybody good? In this one. This is 15, that's the angle I care about. Opposite and adjacent. When I do that division, I'm going to get 0.267. No matter how big those numbers are. If I drew this line 10,000 meters that way and I went up uh I would have to go up 200 2,670 meters, okay? And this one, why is this one one? If that's 45, right? And that's 90, this has to be 45 as well, correct? Okay. If these two angles are the same, doesn't that make these two sides the same? So opposite over adjacent, they're the same number. Opposite divided by adjacent, any number divided by itself is one. Is everybody cool with getting your calculator to give you that decimal? Does everybody understand that what your calculator is telling you is a decimal point that is the result of this fraction? Yes? All right. Now, we are going to learn how to use that decimal to give us an angle, all right? 
You guys are smart kids. Hitting tan, the tan button gave us the decimal. That decimal comes from opposite over adjacent, yes? But if I already have the decimal, don't I already know my opposite and adjacent? Because if this is 0.75, isn't that 75 over 100? Right? Which means the triangle would be, come on, come on, come on, you can do it. 75 over 100, wouldn't it? Right? Now, we already know that 0.75 is the number that we were working with at the very beginning of these notes, yes? So now, the triangle isn't 3, 9, 12, it's 175. But we still don't know this magic angle, do we? Our calculator does. This is how you do it. Everybody look on your calculator, not on the button and not on the screen, on the actual calculator right above the tan button. What do you see? Tan negative one. Negative means opposite, right? If tan gives me the decimal, what do you think the opposite of tan will give me? It'll give me, it gives me the angle. And you get it the exact same way. But instead of pushing tan, you have to make your calculator do tan negative one, which is called the inverse of tan. How do you get that button to work? You use the second function button or shift, depending on what your calculator has. And then you do the exact same thing. If you have a forward calculator, shift tan 0.75. If you have a backwards calculator, 0.75 shift tan. And what does it give you? 30. It actually gives you 36.9, doesn't it? So what does it really give you? It gives you 36.86, but angles don't get measured in decimals. They're actually measured in minutes and seconds, like time, but that's another story for another day. So we round that to 37 degrees. Here is where you need to know something. Angles, we round off to the whole number. <coughs> Excuse me. That negative sign is a typo. Please tell me the tan, the actual angle that goes with 1.23 and the actual angle that goes with 2.5. Your calculator does all the work here for you. Who would like to give me an answer? Ms. Berdini, you're back. Yay! I can feel the learning. If you are so unlucky as to not know who Ms. Berdini is, I feel sorry for you. Oh. Miss Berdini is your new vice principal, who's our old vice principal. <laughs> but only old in that she was here before, not old in that she is old. Nice save, right? Well, it doesn't have to be a nice save. Look at her. She's still, she's still blonde. Look at this. Who's the old man in the room? The balding, fat, gray-haired one at the front. <laughs> yeah, we're having some issues, but not many. We're just starting with tan, but we're running into the, are you in degree mode? Are you in? Ooh, yeah, make sure the D is on the calculator, folks. Whoa, it's almost, Miss Berdini, you're a vice principal, and yet you know how to do trigonometry. Does it have real life uses? <gasps> Amazing. <laughs> have a great day, everybody. <laughs> All right. So, it's like we scripted it, eh? I know, we didn't. 
we're just that awesome. What's the angle for B? 51. Did everybody get 51? Awesome. What is the angle for C? 68.19. So 68.1 rounds down 68 degrees. Can everybody do this? Remember, I haven't showed you how this is used yet. We have just learned how to get the numbers. Is everybody, can everybody make their calculator, show them what it's supposed to show them? Yes or no? Yes, hands up. Still no? Bring your calculator to me, Caitlin. Tan. Right. We're going to do shift tan. Shift tan 0.75 equals. Can you get some water? Yes. So what are we doing right now? So I should. You punch in what you see. Shift tan 1.23. 50.88. 51. Math, no, clear. Uh, mode, degree. Enter. Now you're good. All right, everybody good? All right, now, let us remember, cabbages, that the specific angle. Now, we've got to put a bit of notes in here. Specific angle. What's the angle that we can't ever use tangent for? We can't use it for the right angle, can we? Because what's opposite the right angle in a triangle? The hypotenuse, isn't it? So we can't do tan for 90 because there isn't. And there's two adjacents. Everybody with me? Okay. So... First things first, for any specific angle, never a right angle. It can't be the 90. It has to be one of the others. The tangent ratio compares what to what? We're writing it again because it's that important. You've already written it down already 10 seconds ago. Opposite. The opposite... Measurement over the adjacent measurement. Now we're actually going to use it. Okay? Question. Yes? Is there a way of doing it on a calculator without the tan button? No. Hmm. Now, here's a triangle. Yes? Everybody cool with that? This question says we are working with angle A. Where is angle A? This one. Everybody cool? All right. What do I know about the tangent ratio? Tan always equals opposite over adjacent. Yes? So what is opposite to angle A? 12. What is opposite or what is adjacent to angle A? Five. Everybody cool? Easy peasy, right? What changes in B? Am I working from the same spot in the triangle? No, I'm down here now. Does tangent change or does my position in the triangle change? My position in the triangle has changed because tangent is always opposite over adjacent. So since tan is always O over A, but I'm down here now. What is opposite to B? Five. What is adjacent? Twelve. So depending on where I am in the triangle, it changes the position of the numbers. Does it change the numbers? 
Did I still use 5 and 12 in both? Where they went changed depending on where I was. Everybody got it? Great. Now use your knowledge to tell me what angle A is. Now let's think about this. If I need an angle, is this shift tan or tan? Shift tan. Angles are shift tan. So angle A, I must have to go shift tan. And what was angle A's numbers? What did I have? 12 over 5. 12 over five. Mr. Myers, that's not a decimal. How do I make it a decimal? I do 12 divided by 5, right? But how do I get my calculator to keep that 12 and 5 together? Say it louder. Brackets. So what do I have to hit on my calculator here? If I have a forwards calculator, I punch in what I see, yes? But I got to remember brackets. So what's the first thing I'm going to see if I hit if I have a forward calculator? I need shift tan, so what do I hit? No, I need shift tan. So I hit second or shift, whatever your calculator has. So you want, I want you to write this out, what you do. If you have a forward calculator, I'll write in red, forward. I need to go sh second or shift, whatever your calculator is, tan, bracket. How do I do this in here? How do I do this? One, two, divided by five, close brackets, equals. And what's your answer? Six, what do we do with angle, Sukmeen? Round it off to 67. I know it's bad, but whatever. I do my best. Everybody tells me you're pronouncing my name wrong. Then I say, how do you pronounce it? And they say, don't worry about it. You're worried enough to make fun of me, but you're not worried enough to tell me how to say it better. So I just keep saying it until you tell me otherwise. Thank you. Sukman. Oh, right. Because you're not a mean. You, 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 you took off the G. My fault, totally not yours. I do feel like an idiot now. Sorry, my fault. If you have a backwards calculator, what changes? You start with the number. You just go backwards. Bracket, 12 divided by five. Bracket, second, tan. And then you probably won't need to hit equals. But you should still get 67. Everybody good? All right. You practice for B. So A was 67. What's B? Who has an answer for me? 23 is absolutely correct. Is everybody cool? We're going to do three questions and then we're going to stop. And I'm not giving you homework because you have a test tomorrow. Look at these questions. In four... Am I looking for an angle or a side? Angle. I'm looking for an angle. So in number four, I'm looking for an angle, which means is it sh tan or shift tan? Shift tan, excellent. Now, I'm gonna show you what we use in trig. See that? It's a circle with a line through the middle. That is theta. That means some angle. So in this question, I'm looking for an angle, yes? So whenever I am doing trig, I need to follow these steps. I always will have an angle. Sometimes I know it, sometimes I don't. Do I know the angle in this case? No, so theta is an X. What do I know about theta? What is that 23, opposite or adjacent? 
opposite, because I went across. Opposite equals 23, which makes 15 adjacent, yes? And I know that O and A work with tan, right? But I don't need tan, I need, what do I need? Why don't I need tan? Because I need shift tan, right, Sade? Why? Because it's an angle. Shift tan of what? Twenty three, twenty three over fifteen. Everybody cool? And then you're going to use your calculator there. But we're running out of time, so I'm going to leave you to figure that out in a second. Come to this question. Do I have a theta? Do I have an angle that I know? What is it? So I write the angle. What is that compared to my 15? Opposite equals what? Do you know? So what do we write? Opposite equals x. What's the 37? Adjacent equals 37. Now, since I have the angle, am I doing tan or shift tan? Tan. Tan of, what's my angle? Tan of 15 equals opposite. What's opposite? What's my opposite? X over adjacent. What is it? 37. Now, please be aware, this looks a lot like what we just did, right? The number's on the bottom, so is it multiply or divide? Multiply. So what do I got to hit on my calculator here? 37 times tan fitting. Then you're going to get that answer. What do I have over here? Do I have a theta? What is it? 70. 70. What is that 14? Opposite. Opposite equals 14. What is that X? Adjacent. Tan 70 equals opposite 14 over adjacent. X. Numbers on the bottom. So what is it? No. Sorry, letters on the bottom. So what is it? Divide. So this one is going to be 14 divided by tan 70. Tell me all those answers. Then we're done for the day. You are prepping for your test tomorrow. Your test is tomorrow. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You're going to tell me those two answers. Tomorrow you're going to write your test. If you finish early or even if you don't, I want you to attempt page 55 for Wednesday. Oh, but you needed to see those right answers. They are... Nine point nine and five point one. I just smell like lotion. Yo.